I'm making this video to announce that I am no longer going to be making videos primarily for YouTube. A video I worked on for two days straight for YouTube got taken down without any notice. The substance of the video was about trans women competing with biological women and destroying them at the sport. I'm, I'm mad because I spent so much of my time and effort into making that video all for nothing. I'm fucking tired of tiptoeing around topics that I think YouTube will find offensive. YouTube's acting like a mafioso at this point. I mean, they're the only game in town. That's why they get away with Orwellian censorship of speech that they find remotely objectionable. But mark my words, if they keep this up, they're gonna lose a huge chunk of their audience and their content creators. What's the point of spending so much time creating a video only for YouTube to come down with a hammer fist and squash all your work on a whim? They have no respect for the content creator. All they wanna do is censor speech that they disagree with. I'm asking everyone who's on YouTube and who has an ounce of original thought left and who does not completely go all the way to toe the line of Big Pharma to switch to a different platform right now when it's still early. The only way to stay one step ahead of the inevitable bands is by working on cultivating an audience on other platforms. So when you do finally get taken down, not all your work will have been for nothing. You can bet your bottom dollar that YouTube's arbitrary nature of implementing their guidelines will eventually be used to shut you down if you're saying anything remotely consequential. There's already a whole range of issues that you just can't with the 10 foot pole. Because if you did, you can be rest assured you'll have the cudgel of censoriousness used against you. I mean, look at what they did with Robert F. Kennedy. He's a presidential candidate for God's sake, and they didn't even spare him. Almost all his interviews with prominent YouTubers have either been labeled with disclaimers, removed, or algorithmically suppressed, all because he's a serious threat to the current establishment as it stands. Most recently, I heard Theo Wan talking about it on the Joe Rogan Experience about his interview getting taken down with Bobby Kennedy. If this doesn't qualify as blatant election interference, I don't know what does. The United States Constitution explicitly prohibits a presidential candidate from being censored. But YouTube has no regard for the country's laws in which it operates. So given the position that I find myself in, in terms of living in constant fear of which of my videos is going to get taken down, I've decided I'm going to switch over to a different platform. And so far as I can see, I've got three choices on the table. I've got Rumble, I've got Odyssey, and I've got Twitter. As great as Rumble is, they're still in their infancy with a small fraction of the viewership of YouTube. Odyssey is but a tiny dot on the map. So the only realistic option I'm left with is Twitter. Twitter has an incredible reach. Dr. Carlson's first episode got 100 million views in its first 24 hours. That number is unparalleled when it comes to political shows. Not to mention Daily Wire's What's a Woman that garnered over 150 million views. Again, these numbers are unheard of for a political show on YouTube. The only time you get these many eyeballs on one video on YouTube is if it's a music video. It's incredibly rare for even as someone as big as Tucker Carlson to break the 10 million mark on YouTube. So you can bet Twitter has the potential to be a formidable competitor to YouTube and throw a monkey wrench in YouTube's cog. But the only thing Twitter lacks as of making this video is the basic infrastructure to leverage their position and beat YouTube at their own game. So coming to one of the reasons why I'm partly making this video, I have a few suggestions for engineers over at Twitter. And I think what I'm about to suggest is gonna be mutually beneficial for both Twitter as an organization and content creators. The first one is to be able to organize your videos under one subsection on your profile. Kind of similar to how YouTube does it by putting all your videos under videos on your profile. And creators should also have the ability to choose what videos appear in that tab. So we can organize our videos for the audience and also allow for thumbnails to be added to the videos. All this so my videos don't get lost on the timeline among retweets and tweets. There has to be a dedicated section for videos on Twitter because that is what will incentivize creators to create long form content for Twitter. Right now, Twitter is primarily first and foremost for news distribution and expanding Twitter to also be a place where long form media thrives is gonna require a fuckload of bandwidth and fundamentally restructuring the platform. So it's bound to be overwhelmingly monetarily taxing on Elon. But if anyone in the world could pull it off, it's him. He certainly has the overhead to run Twitter at a loss until it turns a profit. My third suggestion is to set a clear set of guidelines that are in standing with the First Amendment. If a video is controversial, it shouldn't be limited in its reach. The only thing that should be done with that video is advertisers should not have their ads posted right next to the video. That's all. The only time Twitter should limit the reach of a video is if it's directly in violation of the First Amendment. Like if the person in the video is explicitly calling for violence, unambiguously. And also of course, if it's distributing or aiding and abetting CP. I understand that the First Amendment is only applicable in the United States. So if the governments of other countries force Twitter's hand in shutting down certain speech, Twitter should fight tooth and nail in challenging those censorious orders by the governments by filing a case with their judicial systems to the extent they have a judicial system. From my understanding of Twitter policy under Elon Musk,
first and to give him the credit where it's due he already does this to some extent so there you go my only suggestion and request is that you continue doing this for videos as well and if for any reason a video is being throttled or is in violation of twitter's policies it should have a banner right underneath the video that indicates it's being throttled and it should also mention why it's being throttled and most importantly it should mention what policy of twitter it's in violation of believe it or not that's all it's as simple as that jokes aside i'm not oblivious to the fact of how difficult of an undertaking it is to turn a platform that is based primarily on text into a video based platform is going to require a lot of money and effort on part of twitter administration but it's certainly achievable with one step at a time that's all i've got for today and thank you for watching it through to the end